What's going on guys, it's Pixelated and today we are looking at a pair of sneakers that I was unexpectedly anticipating. It's not just any sneaker, it's not just one of those that has had plenty of releases this year. In fact, believe it or not, this sneaker silhouette hasn't had a single release this year until now. Isn't that something? We've been so used to seeing the same hot sneakers release in a multitude of colorways pretty much on a monthly basis. This feels kind of refreshing. The sneaker I'm referring to is the Yeezy 500 in the bone white colorway. And I know what you're thinking at this very moment as you stare at these pretty shoes on my wife's size 10 feet. No, this is not a Yeezy 500 blush re-release and I don't blame you for thinking that it is. The bone white kind of looks like if the blush 500s hadn't seen any sun for a year. It's like Donald Trump or the cast of Jersey Shore before their fake spray tans. The Yeezy 500 bone white is Adidas and Kanye West's fifth offering of the Yeezy 500 silhouette, the previous ones being the classic blush 500, the supermoon yellow 500, the salt 500s, and the utility black 500s. So you have your fair share of colorways to choose from for the sneaker, although I'm not sure if we can call them different colorways, maybe we need to start making shadeways a thing. The sneakers released on Saturday, August 24th, 2019, and most sneaker stores released them on a first come first serve basis implying that there was a decent amount of stock. But the Foot Locker we lined up at didn't even have enough pairs for more than half the line, we were probably within the first 20 people in line, and the smallest size they had once they got up to me was a size 10 and a half, which was perfect for me, but it makes you wonder what's going on. Was stock much lower than expected or is there something else we need to worry about? Although the stock was projected to be relatively low on these regardless, I mean not low enough that they were ridiculously limited but low enough that we knew demand was going to be higher than supply. So I would recommend you get your pair right now before prices go up, these are going for great prices right now, close to retail for most sizes, I've left a link in the bio where you can get these so go check that out. The Yeezy 500 was the first official Yeezy release with Adidas that didn't have boost. Yes, I still don't count the power phases as Yeezy shoes and you shouldn't either. Slapping the word Yeezy on the box and Calabasas on the shoe doesn't automatically make an 80s or 90s shoe a Yeezy. This was sort of an earth shattering moment in many ways for Adidas and Yeezy, but most importantly for the customer. For Adidas and Yeezy, it kind of felt like they were taking a step backwards and reducing the quality of the product by excluding the latest and most comfortable technology from it. And as consumers, we didn't know what this meant for the brand because we viewed Boost as the ultimate in comfort and that was being taken out of the shoe. I mean, as Kanye West and Adidas, you're offering the most premium shoe, why would you take the best cushioning technology out of it. Does that mean we're getting a not as comfortable shoe and should we still be paying a premium for a shoe without boost? There's quite literally a negligible 20 Canadian dollar difference between the Yeezy 500 and the Yeezy Boost 350, a shoe with a full boost midsole and a prime knit upper, while the Yeezy 500 uses an older cushioning technology known as Adiprene Plus and traditional suede and mesh materials for the upper. Things just weren't adding up, but once the Blush 500 release finally came around and people started getting pairs on feet, things started to change. People loved the way they felt on feet, they looked great, even though initially Initially, they looked super chunky and everyone thought they were going to look too bulky or be too heavy, they were none of those things. They didn't feel uncomfortable at all. On top of that, they were durable AF. In fact, as a person who clocked a lot of miles on my Blush 500s, not counting the shoes getting dirty, they are resoundingly durable. Not a single sign of damage on those bad boys, aside from the wear on the outsole, obviously. Now, I'll be honest with you, when they first announced the Yeezy 500 Bone White, I wasn't too excited about them. In fact, I was repulsed. If you look at the initial Yeezy 500 Bone White release photos, they were gross. Look at that Bone White upper contrast with that gum outsole. What is that? I typically like gum bottoms, but my eyes were hurting on this one. Thank the gods of Olympus they decided not to keep that as the official colorway. One thing that allows the Yeezy 500 to stand out as a Yeezy is its use of traditional materials, so let's get into the materials real quick. The entire upper of this shoe is made of two main materials, quite noticeably we have this underlying layer of mesh that creates the sides, a portion of the toe box, the heel counter, and it makes up the majority of the tongue. Then we have the second layer of bone white leather overlaying and creating the illusion of the mesh being segmented. We see it on the sides, a portion of the toe box, creating an 8 or infinity symbol on the tongue depending on how you look at it, and a small portion on the heel. Finally, we have these suede panels doing something similar on the ankle area, little oval shaped layers enforcing the lace eyelets, forming the majority of the toe box, and once again adding to the heel counter. We have this layer of harder material that is essentially the reinforcement and divider between the upper and the midsole going around the sides of the shoe. The Adidas and Yeezy branded insole is an ortholite insole, as you can see the crazy colors and segmented pressure areas once you take it out of the shoe. The shoe comes with bone white rope laces. Finally, looking at my favorite and probably the defining feature of the shoe, this chunky looking midsole. The midsole is made of Adiprene Plus and has this wavy, bubbly design that kinda looks like the plane of space and time warping to create this dinosaur-shaped foot. The midsole was inspired by or outright taken from Adidas' heritage feet you wear or FYW shoes. It's made of Adiprene Plus cushioning, a cushioning tech created by Adidas, and although it's not boost, it still has a decently soft consistency to it, and for all those doubting its comfort, 
Trust me, it's comfortable. And light for that matter. The outsole is rubber and is very grippy. Put these in an indoor basketball court and you'll see how that grip holds up. Although the shoe itself isn't meant to be as supportive as current basketball shoes, so maybe don't actually play a pickup game in them. Just lightly run on the court or something. <laughs> when it comes to sizing, I learned my lesson the hard way. I strongly recommend going half a size up in these. I bought my Blush 500s in my true to size size 10 and although they felt fine initially, I mean, I could tell immediately there was just a slight bit of snugness around the toes, but I assumed the shoe would break in over time. It did not break in over time and instead my toes just started hurting and eventually I sold them because it didn't make sense for me to keep shoes I wasn't gonna wear. It was a gray area initially because I felt like if I go half a size up there would be too much space but this time I went half a size up and I got a size 10 and a half and they fit like a dream so I recommend going half a size up on these. When it comes to comfort these shoes might not boast a boost midsole or a prime knit upper but rest assured even with the traditional materials the Yeezy, Camp and Adidas have made a sneaker that you can wear all day long. These are probably going to be my go to daily shoe now that I I finally have a 500 in the right size. When I first got these in hand, my reaction was exactly the same as when I first saw the actual release images. All I could think of was, are you serious? Did they just release the blushes again under a different colorway name? And rest assured, they look almost the same, maybe just a shade different, which is why I said earlier that we need to make shadeways a thing. Adidas, do it. Start using that word so I can get some credit. Because this pale vampire edition of the blushes, I mean the bone whites, can't possibly be considered an entirely new colorway. Anyways, all joking aside, I really do love this shoe and since I don't have a pair of blushes anymore these are definitely a must buy for me and if you don't have a pair yet or you missed out on the initial blush release and don't want to pay the resale you'll be just as happy with these on your feet I promise you so go grab your pair from the link in the bio these are going for amazing prices right now and you don't want to miss out what do you guys think about these are they the 500s we need but don't deserve or does Kanye need to drop another 350 let me know in the comments catch you later pixelated has white bones